with Grace in My Space. Today we're going to turn this into this. Now if you didn't get the gist of it, we're making a pig rail today. If you've never DIYed before, if you've never built before, this is a great project to start with. You can make peg rails, peg racks for any space in your home. Laundry room, mudroom, bedrooms, bathrooms, living rooms, kitchens, literally every space. Literally. It's not an exaggeration. And the beauty of making your own is that you can customize it exactly to the space. So I have a very long wall behind me. This is our mud room. I want to fill up this entire wall with pegs and have open storage for coats, backpacks, muddy coveralls, all the things. And today I'm going to be using one by eight by eight poplar and these decorative pieces of trim that are going to go like so on either side. And so you can actually take really simple, plain pieces of wood, dress them up with some decorative molding and make it look even extra custom and fancy if you want it to. I'm also going to be using these walnut pegs. Look how pretty that wood is. I'm using walnut on our kitchen island and so I wanted to intersperse it in different areas of the house. So I'm going to paint this portion, leave these wood and let's get to building. Quick caveat. If you're just looking for a really simple, like two foot by four inch peg rack, they're not that expensive to buy. And I will link up some of my favorites for you in the description. On the other hand, if you want to make your own, if you need it a little custom length, or you have a large area that you're trying to cover where it would be pretty expensive to buy pre-made, then this is the tutorial for you. First steps, pretty simple. Just measure the length of the first board that you need. If you're just doing one single, uh, peg rail, then it's a really, really easy process. If you're turning corners, all you have to do is miter them. It's not too difficult, but for now, we're going to measure. I, I basically want to span, I basically want to span this entire wall without covering the light switch. So actually, we're going to make this. Okay. Minus seven, minus seven. That's the length of my board. Now the steps to make this peg rack are very straightforward. You simply cut your piece of wood to length. You cut your molding to length. You can create a return on the ends, but I'm just painting mine, so I left mine as a straight cut. And then you go about adding your pegs. First, you're going to want to test out the spacing five inches apart is pretty standard but when i laid mine out they were a little too close because i wanted to double layer mine since my board is an eight inch board you can choose the thickness of your board in the past i've used four inch boards i've used five inch boards and those i only used a single layer of pegs since i went deeper i am adding two layers and found that six inches apart was best for that type of spacing Next, you're going to want to draw your level line down either the center of the board if you're doing one layer or down the center of your thirds if you're doing two layers. Then you're going to mark where each peg is going to go based on the spacing that you chose. And once you've done doing that, you have laid out your lines for all of the drilling you need to do to add your pegs. It'll look something like this if you're doing a double layered board. Once you're done marking everything out, add a piece of tape to your spade bit that is the same depth as your tenon. That way you don't go too far through your board and you have a little bit of support on the back of your board remaining for your peg when it gets inserted. Drill a couple of test holes, make sure it's the right size based on the tenon, and then go ahead and do all the drilling for your pegs across the entire board. Make sure you're doing a test fit and that you're holding your drill straight up and down so that you're not going to have crooked pegs. Now, one thing to note, if you're drilling all the way through your board like this, you're gonna have tear out on the back and that doesn't look very good. Also, it doesn't have as much support as if you're not going all the way through your board. So put a piece of wood down on the bottom and then lay your next board on top and drill through that. And the board on the bottom will prevent that tear out and it will help you have that stopping point. Once all of your pegs are drilled, sand it down really well. 
Now I'm just gonna lay it out flat, dry fit it on the floor, make sure everything measures correctly, looks smooth, and our next step is paint. Now I went ahead and I primed my board off the wall. It's just easier to do that. And then I had Aaron to help me hold it up so we could make sure it was good and level and screwed it in. You can see here, I also had my screws pre-drilled so that it was easier to get it in. And I had countersunk the holes prior to putting it up so that they could be filled and sanded completely smooth so you will never know that they are there. Also allows you to place your screws where your studs are, even if they're a little bit out of alignment with where your pegs are, it won't matter because they're hidden. Prior to painting, make sure and fill all of your nail holes, caulk all of your seams, and get those really smooth and wiped clean and ready for paint. If you do this, it will look like a professional result at the end. If you're not painting, then your process is going to be a little bit different. Make sure and stain your board ahead of time. That'll make it a lot easier once you're ready to install it. Since I'm leaving my pegs wood, I did a clear coat to help prevent any moisture damage. Final step, inserting your pegs into the holes with wood glue, making sure it's a really tight, good fit, and that way they'll be extra secure. Put it around your tenon really good, and that way you're not gonna overload it and have it oozing out everywhere, but it's also gonna cover really well. Put it on the back too. Ta -da. Go ahead and get all of your pegs glued into the holes, making sure to wipe away any glue that's dripping down because if you do not, that will show. This is another reason why I like to paint first and then insert the pegs last so that I'm not having to paint around the pegs if I wanted to keep them wood. And I didn't have a rubber mallet on hand, so I ended up using a glove to protect my pegs from the hammer, helping get those really tight and flush, but a rubber mallet, that would be your best bet. Now the beauty of this project is that you can do all types of configurations. In our last house, I made all of these peg racks myself. It went around the entire room with that mitered corner. I painted them. It was a smaller board, very different than what I've done here in this home where I've added some decorative molding. I kept the pegs wood. I made it much larger with a double rack. And so you can really think through what will serve your family best and design it from there. And that is how easily something like this can come together. You can customize it any way you want, which is my favorite thing about making your own peg rack. This is how it looks on a daily basis. Actually, this is a little light. That's a little light handed. So this holds a lot of weight when you anchor it into studs, key point. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this came together. Make sure and check out the description. I have links to written tutorials as well. And stay tuned, there is so much more to come DIY style in this mudroom to complete the space. I'll see you next time.